Ricky, <laughs> let's flow, fam. Brandon Durrell, how you doing, brother? It's good, man. It's good to see how you. you. Doing? I like that hat. Appreciate it, man. Fam, fam, Hawaii. This is from my boys' business in uh in Maui, Hawaii. Shout out to Dayton Galisa now. <laughs> shout out, shout out. So are they they spreading out, or what are they doing with that? Yeah, man, the, the clothing line is called Fam Hawaii on Instagram and, and Facebook. Um, it's a pretty good movement, man. It's about uh, staying rooted, staying rooted in your culture and who you are as a person. So it's a dope cause, man. Yeah, we could <clears throat> staying rooted in, in like wherever you're from. Doesn't matter where you're from, right? Family. It could be soul family. It could be DNA family, whatever family is to you. Talking about spreading aloha and staying rooted in, in here. You, you spend a bit of time in Hawaii? Yeah, man. Um, Hawaii is a, is, a, is a second home for me. So I'm originally from New York, New Jersey area. But um, I used to play professional baseball out there. And then I just never looked back. So in and out of there for about seven years. It was like a little home base for me. I used to play in Hawaii. Worked, to play ball. Yeah, Hawaii. Yeah, Hawaii. And then also just living as well. And um, I actually worked when I was done playing ball. I worked at the Boys and Girls Club in Maui mm. for a bit. So I was, I was rooted there for, for a while. Tell us a little bit about your balling times. Yeah, man. Um, <clears throat> grew up playing uh, basketball, baseball um, in New York, New Jersey, and uh, baseball stuck with me, man. So uh, I, you see uh, they, people call me Bam, Bam Bam, because I had to hit the baseball hard. So um, that stuck with me and ball, and I, I was blessed. Bam. Blessed, exactly. <laughs> I was blessed enough to get a scholarship. To you. <clears throat> I was actually a switch hitter. So, I, so if it was a righty pitcher, I batted left. Lefty pitcher, batted right. So. Yeah, yeah. I'm the same. Switch room on him. I'm the same. I'm like, because I play cricket, but I'm the same. I can, I can, ah, I can do both sides as well. Ambidextrous. And oftentimes I'll just switch it halfway and just like do the switch hit. So, bro, I love cricket. Like I, I, uh, I went to a big bash when I used to live in Perth, and man, like I fell in love with it. It was dope. It's wild. Yeah, it's, it's great. Yeah, yeah. Just keep seeing the, the guys hit bombs, and the fireworks, and the dances, and all that stuff. <laughs> it's a good show. Like I, I couldn't do the regular cricket. Like the matches were just too long for me. Yeah. Um, and I was frying in the sun, but like the big bash, man, it was like, it was, it was hype. Three hours done. <clears throat> yeah, man. Yeah. So yeah, we, we got to do that one day, man. We got to, we got to hit. Have you ever played? Have you ever cricket. played before? No, no. I mean, just messing around at the beach and stuff like that. Or like, um, when I worked in, uh, in Africa, we had a, a cricket's actually surprisingly pretty popular in Uganda because, um, the British influence. Yeah. So, um, I, I would cut it up with some of the kids there and play a little bit, but not, not much. So we, we got to get on that. It's difficult, right? Like you think it's easy, and then like you know, people be bowling at you quick, you know, and then and then you got the pitch with your hits, which you can do anything off the pitch. So you you got to be super focused. Yeah, bro. Like and have the the spins and everything coming in, and and also too, like when I hit the ball, I'm sitting there watching it, like and I drop the I drop the cricket stick instead of like holding it, touching and shit. Like I have my baseball <laughs> instinct come. I just drop the bat. I'm like ah, oh. <laughs> but it's a dope sport, man. I I really enjoy it. Yeah, nice. And in terms of like the ball, like th that's that's taking you around. You, you said you're at Hawaii, and you know, like where else is it taking you? Yeah, man. I started my played college ball. I was blessed to to get a scholarship in America to play um in Oklahoma, uh, school to, uh, school in Oklahoma, and then uh, from there I played in New Mexico for a little bit, and then I uh, it brought me to Hawaii, um, to Maui, actually to the Big Island, Big Island first, um, a team called the Hilo Stars. And then I ended up living in Maui a few years later because I just fell in love with that island. But yeah, Hawaii. And then I was blessed to play in Japan for that experience. Um, Osaka side, Ishikawa. And then um, brought me to Perth. I played in Perth for a bit. Played some uh, some state league out there. It was, it was pretty awesome. And then uh, what's, Germany. What's the leagues like? Is it like, you know, so that is that like a dream for people who play ball? Like, are there kids out there who, who look to travel the world playing ball? Like, what's the what's the kind of... Um, I don't know. Is there is there much money in the game? Like, what's the deal there? Like, I actually like I was blessed enough to to make more money playing um, abroad than I was in America. Because in America, it's it's so many ball players and it's so competitive as well. Unless you get to that certain level, then you're not going to be making the the dollars. But um, you got to be like for say for, plus or something. Yeah, like say for Americans, um, when we start traveling and playing abroad, like there's some really good leagues out there. Like in Germany, they have a Bundesliga out there. Um, South Africa and, and, and the Netherlands, they have really good leagues. But um, for Americans primarily, like usually like after maybe like they stopped uh, chasing the American dream with the ball, they like, we get to a point where it's like, all right, I'm not, I want to travel the world. This, this sport 
taking me to this point. And now I'm, I'm going to, I can be paid playing in South Africa. I can get paid playing in Perth, Australia. So it's just beautiful destination. So that's, so it's more of a thing where like an end of career kind of thing. And you just, um, you take all the blessings in. So yeah. is, is there a kind of, was that your idea? Like, did you think, Oh, I want to travel the world or did somebody tell you that? Or like, Hey, did you know you could, you could use this as a ticket around the world? Or like, where did that idea come from? I had some boys who've done it. Um, when I was in college, um, one of my former roommates, um, he went to play in uh, Stockholm. He played in Sweden while I was still in college. And I was like, that's pretty dope, man. He's out in Sweden doing his thing. So I just kept it in the back of my mind. And then when I just was completely over and done with the with the business side of, of professional baseball in America, I was like, I want to hit the seas, man. I want to get out there. And in terms of the the regime and the practice that that takes, you know, the discipline and stuff that it takes. Like, what did you take from that as, as being a, a professional sports person? Like, is that something that just came naturally for you? You loved or did you have a love hate relationship with the, have to train all the time or did you fall out of love with it? Like what, what was that like? By the time I got to playing overseas, like how, how was I with it? It was actually, um, it was a lot more difficult to stay in it to be honest. Cause um, in America, it's like we play, we play six days a week. And then uh, we have an off day and every day you're in the batting cage, you're doing something where in um, overseas, it's like two or three times a week and then you play on the weekends. So you have more downtime. And for me, it's like, because I was at that part of my career. Get in that brain and then out of the brain and then like. <clears throat> yeah. And I'm um, growing up, training was just like breathing to me. So I was always training, but now like end of my career, I'm like, I love ball, but it's like, I want to see life. So it's like the times that I was spending in the batting cage now, in Perth, I was at the beach. I was I was at Fremantle Beach. I was traveling, doing things, you know, Scarborough. So um, it, it took a lot more motivation to, like, stay in the game kind of deal. Because now I was just like, I just want to play, man. I was like, like, not like play ball, but like play life. Play life. Mm -hmm. where, where is that taking you in terms of playing life? Like, yeah, I know you've been up to some pretty interesting stuff, so. Yeah, just the people that I've met in my journey, um, just different cultures and, um, being out there, like being in, uh, being in Perth, so close to like Bali, so close to Southeast Asia, um, being able to go on those trips and just opening up my eyes to uh, things I've never seen. I'm, I mean, I'm just, in this life, I'm a guy from, from Jersey, New York, and you've been to Jersey a little bit, and I mean, it's kind of like, you were just there. It's like the same little patterns people stay in and everything. So um, being able to be out in a place like Bali, being from Jersey, New York, it's like, wow, this, this is going on as I'm in New Jersey, as I'm in New York. And it's, it's fascinating. So it's, yeah, man, it's, ah. Is that something that many of your friends and family have? Like, like I know that the, the statistics, I don't know what they are. It's like one in one in five or something. People in the States have a passport or like, I don't know if that statistics have changed, but like. No, nah, yeah. No, nah, like most, most like I'm in, in my friend circle since like high school, I have a very close knit friends and, um, I got, I'm, I'm that one who just, who's never home. I'm like that gypsy nomad, you know, hippie kind of guy who's, who's never home and he, he left. And, um, and it's not many, like it's, and then traveling Europe, traveling to Europe, traveling to Australia, like I've like so many different countries and cultures, people travel, they take pride in having six weeks off and going on and, and decompressing where Americans, you're, you're lucky if you get two weeks off, mm. you're lucky. Um, and you have to beg for that. And so, yeah, I, I was the one who got away kind of deal in my hood. Yeah, nice. And is that something that you've, I know you've been in many places. Name some of the places you've been and tell us a little bit about what you've been doing in those places. Um, oof. <laughs> yeah, man. Um, deep work on myself. It's been just getting to these places. So say like um, Hawaii, like... Um, Speaking in spirituality terms, it's, it's, it's a big, um, it's a big part for the heart, the heart chakra for like Lemurian energies and just beautiful things like um, just come up. So like going to those, just being present in those places, like it forces you just to expand, like expansion, like in, in your heart space um, and the challenges of what you knew before, um, before you get into these cultures, like being around Hawaiians, it just, it's, they're such a beautiful culture and beautiful people. And it just, it just expands everything about your being just being there so being there expanded me and it like motivates you to want to work on yourself and to, to love more and just relax and stop being so uptight um bali just seeing the simplicity in bali with with the, with the Balinese people how they work to uh to have enough they, they don't work to like hoard hoard money 
like they, they work just to have food and stuff. And I, that inspires me because it's like, what's really the meaning of life in that way? So um, it challenged me in so many ways and to be grateful and thankful um, for what I have. And um, to see that there is a sense of like, even being from America, obviously I'm privileged, but like I have a certain amount of privilege as well from what I was exposed to growing up. And I see that more when I travel and, and meet people from other countries. And you, you mentioned Lemuria there. What well, can you tell us about that? I know there's a, you know, I know a little bit about it, but I haven't done much research. So yeah, do, do you know, can you share a little bit on that? Yeah, it's um, ancient civilization, um, say like talking, going back like um, pre like um, Sumerian, if you ever looked up any Sumerian cultures, um, you can put Lemuria kind of like um, an Atlantis kind of thing, like a lost city in that way. Um, and it's very, um, and. It is said that it's 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 places by the Hawaiian Islands, like Polynesia, Hawaiian Islands, and that part of the Pacific. That's and um, it's yeah, it's really powerful stuff. Just that uh, vortices, if you want to call it. So um, that's why so many people are drawn to to Hawaii. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's water and stuff like that. But um, there's something different. And um, and from living there, I've seen so many people, whether they be whether they are they're Hindu or they're Christian or they're they're Muslim. Um, or they're they're nothing, but everybody feels something there, and it's interesting because everybody associates it with what they grew up in. So if you're a Christian, grew up, and you go to Hawaii, you're like, oh my God, I feel God so much here. I feel Jesus. I've seen people who are um, Hindu, and they're like, oh my gosh, I, Shiva, I see, I feel this, I feel the, the the gods here, and and people who don't have anybody that a higher power that they they associate with, they're like, I don't know, but I don't know this shit, but I feel something here, something, mm-hmm. something. I love Hawaii. I don't know what it is. So it's just um, when I speak of Lemuria, it's it's a it's an energetic force, and it's um it's it's a living force, a living energy that um that people feel. And it's and in Hawaii they call it mana. Mm-hmm. It's like it's it's a mana, it's a living energy. Yeah, beautiful. And what do you, what do you spend your time now that you're not bowling over there? What what do you spend your time doing over there? Um, <clears throat> now I just um deep men's work, man. I've been getting into men's work more because I feel um, the call for myself to be in it and also for doing my part and um, helping brothers. Um, not too long ago, I had this realization. Um, I grew up with three sisters, three beautiful sisters. Um, I have an older brother. He's about 40. And um, in and out of my life, I dealt with his troubles. Like life, life happened to him, like many people. Um, different troubles, like law troubles and that. Um, so I never really got a chance to build a relationship with him. But from a young age, I always craved that relationship with him. I would always <clears throat> get letters, like spot letters from him, like once a year, um, once every two years while he was in prison writing to me and different things. So I always would have that, like, um, I want to have a big brother, but it's not, it's not present. So I always craved that relationship with a big brother. So um, over the last year, I just been like still feeling that, like never healed it, like never healed that, that aspect of me. And it's affected me in a lot of ways because I've always wanted to have that relationship with the masculine. I have a beautiful relationship with my father. He, he's, he's my best friend for sure. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> he's my best friend, but still there's something about having a brother as well. And, and, and I know you as well. You know how that is, man. Like brothers are just, it's, it's different than a father relationship. Mm. And um, so recently I was like men's work. Like I, I vowed to myself and I'm passionate about being a brother to the brothers I've never had. Mm-hmm. And the brother, and being the brother I've always wanted <clears throat> for for brothers, so that that's been like passionate to me, um, and in that way. So and what a, what kind of so you actually have physical spaces that you that you work with men or young men or it doesn't matter what age or like what's what's that look like? Yeah, it's it's been creeping up on me too. Um, last year, I um, rewind a little bit. I, I worked in um, East Africa. I worked in um, Kampala, Uganda. I was blessed to have a physical education um, teaching job there, and um, and I was head basketball coach. So I was around teenage boys all the time. And I was just watching these boys like, man, I used to beat these knuckleheads too, man. Just, just beating around thinking, you know, everything. And, um, and I'm like, they have so much to learn, but it's like, I love being that big brother figure to them. And, um, and that pushed me to like, when I came back to America last year, I was like, I, I want to go deeper into to, to young men's work, to men's work, because it's, I, I see, I see there's a lot that needs to be healed with men. Mm-hmm. And so now, um, I have several clients. I'm a holistic life coach and um, I work with, with men and women, but I, I have a deep passion of working with men who, who are trying to figure it out. Like I love men who are trying to work on themselves 
and um, but they might not have an outlet or not know which way to go about it. So I'm here to help guide them in that direction that they want to go mm-hmm. to redefine masculinity, if that, that, that makes any sense, um, because we're yeah. told a lot of things that boys can't cry and all that shit. Yeah. Talk to us about that, because that's a big piece for me also, like b- b- balancing both the, the feminine and the masculine within whatever physical, you know, that you have, if you if you identify as a man or if you identify as a woman or whatever, or somewhere in between, I, I feel that cultivating a healthy and integrated relationship with all the aspects mm. that are within you is, is the healthy way to go about it rather than, you know, being the tough person or if you're, uh, if you identify as a woman, just to be that nurturing, only that nurturing and flowing. Like I feel having that nice balance, mm. but having a, a real honest and, and deep connection with the, the parts of you that exist within you, which I believe all of, uh, all of that exists within us. Yeah. Yeah. No, I a hundred percent agree with that, man. Um, yeah. And I know, uh, I know you do, you take pride in that as well because, um, with your, with your Qigong on practice, I know that, that you do as well. Like it, it brings you back to center, back to balance and stuff. So if you feel something too far here, you're coming back here. If you feel it too here, you come here. So, um, yeah, it's, it's very important. And, um, for me, it's growing up in New York, New Jersey. Um, like, like a lot of places we're taught that, um, men aren't supposed to show emotions men aren't supposed to this, men aren't supposed to that. And you're less of a man if you do this or you do that. Um, when I was in Uganda, I was, um, there was this eight year old kid um, when I was teaching and um, him and his friend was running around being knuckleheads, kicking a football around. And um, his friend fell and he hurt his knee and he started crying and he came to my office. It was like, Coach D, uh, my knee hurts. And his friend was like, you're not supposed to cry. You're, you're a boy. He said that to him and I was like, and it just dawned on me. I was like, that's the, that's the consciousness of little boy. So I, I looked at his friend and like, I was, I grabbed him by the shirt like this. I went like that. I said, well, if he's not supposed to cry, how come he can? And he goes, I don't know. My dad just told me that, that I'm not supposed to cry. And I was like, man, this is deeper than, 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 than just these little boys. Mm-hmm. So I was like, it's, 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 we have no outlet. Like we're taught to be a certain way. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's not right. If we weren't meant to cry as men and show emotion, why do we have these, these tear ducts? What do we have? Four tear ducts? Like, why do we have them? You know, why do we feel hurt? Why do we feel sad? If men were supposed to be a certain way, we wouldn't have them at all. Mm. So um, I'm I'm passionate about redefining that. Now I'm not saying for men to go out and be crybabies, you know, and just and sob everywhere. No, it's not about that. But it's about having a healthy balance of feminine and masculine and being able to express yourself through communication. Mm. Um, the age of sweeping shit under the rug is is gone, man. Like it's gone. Those those men are breaking down. And that's and we can see that physically in the world today with with countries, um, government systems, there are a lot of things like that. Masculine, let's hide it under the rug, is breaking down. And and as well, like it's it's going going to fester, right? Like if you put it there, it's gonna get moldy, it's gonna fester, it's gonna come out in ways. And you look at the suicide rates in men, older men, younger men, you know, like you know, and women have that outlet in terms of they speak a lot to each other. They just just the talking to one another and have, having a space to to release the whatever's going on outwardly in the world without being it's not there's no stigma around it there's no judgment around it it's kind of normal to do that so I feel creating those spaces to to share like you know brothers to share with one another and and having that is is a powerful practice. Yes, it is, and that's I'm glad you 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 brought that up too. Like suicide rates too, like. Um, I was reading an article that was saying like um, 2018, like suicide rates are at, amongst the highest it's ever been in recorded period. And um, that, that hurt my heart space a lot because it's, to me, it's like um, me as a person, I, I could have crossed a path with somebody who was struggling um, with, with that, not being able to express like in New York, just brushing shoulders with somebody. I could have helped somebody just communicate openly like that I care. And um, it's a real thing like to have that outlet. Um, and as brothers, like we, we have to create a container, create a space, like work together so we can share those things with non-judgment. And, um, and that, that, that's how you systematically change structure of everything is just having that open communication with love and no judgment. Mm. And what are some other kind of principles that you work with? I know you work with these guys and uh, you mentioned working, doing some work with P, shout outs to P, Preston Smiles, um, mm. doing some amazing work in the world um, with his partner as well. And, Welcome to the world, Kingston Rye. Also, recently, that was amazing to see these. I love when when conscious, you know, people who are 
have have some level of awareness and, and consciousness and and wokeness if you will um uh, uh breeding and having offspring and bringing bringing new life into the world i think that's that's an important piece but um yeah what you, when you're working with these guys what are some of the principles that or first tell us about what the work is and then tell us about also some of the principles you work with and yeah what kind of um, what comes up a lot or you know I, I imagine that you have some sort of outline or some sort of um yeah principles that you work by so i'm, I'm be keen to, to know yeah. about that yeah, before I touch on um on Preston, just with my personal clients, um my my three like my trinity that I go with with holistic life coaching is um is integrity, compassion, and love. Like those three things, um, underlining and everything to me, um if every, if everything falls into that trinity, like there's there's a there's a wholeness in that. Mm. So with my guys I try to I, I I challenge them with integrity, with compassion and with love. And and love can have two faces as well. Um, it could be like light a fire under their ass, or it could be like, "Hey, come here, bro. Let me give you a hug." Mm-hmm. So it it swings depending on the need of 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 my of my guy of 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 my woman who's there who need that that um support. So that for me, it's, it's those three: integrity, love, and compassion is my three my three pillars and my trinity. And um, can, and can you define those real quick for us? So I know there's, they're great concepts, and a lot of people know them. But mm-hmm. like, what's the definition? I guess you can go dictionary, or you can just go what you know from from your own experience. In my experience, is love is 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 non-judgmental. Um, it's it's unconditional, no matter what. And um, and the depth, how how far I'm willing to to go with with my clients, it depends on me. So um, unconditional love always, and there's nothing that they can do that's gonna make me be like, I don't want to work with you anymore. Like like you're gone. Like there's nothing that they can do in that way. If there is, then it's because I'm. If there's something inside of me, so um love unconditional love number one for them because if i can go to the depths for them i challenge them to go depths for other people as well talk to to, to us about that about like deal breakers and things like this like is is there an is there such thing as a deal breaker if someone's abusive if someone's physically abusive whether it's like is there is there certain things which which are absolute no-no or like where, where do you draw the line in terms of like actually i'm not you know you're not helping yourself or me by either physically verbally emotionally abusing me like how like how do you how do you navigate that you know what's um what's what's amazing um the beautiful the beautiful nature of vibration um i've been blessed where i haven't had any clients or anybody come to my field who are in that in that way when people come to me it's like i'm i'm drawing in people who are already of a certain level of vibration of love mm-hmm. so um i don't yeah i haven't even attracted people who are like in that kind of like state of like self love and, and stuff which I'm I'm open to to working with them and, and giving them tools and tips, but people have to have a, a a sense of readiness before they they come to me in that way. Mm-hmm. If that makes any sense, um, because I'm I'm also I'm not a medical practitioner as well. So if somebody is having different feelings and stuff like that, like up here, I do recommend they they can go they they go and seek help because that's that's not what I'm I'm paid to do. Um, but but yeah, so um. If we were to say now, if somebody was coming in and say, like, I know they're, say, abusing their wife or they're abusing this person or verbally, whatever it might be, I draw the line at that. Like, that's that's a no-no for me. Like, you, like, we can't roll together because that's that's not coming from a place of love for me. Mm. But um, thankfully for universal law and everything like that, laws of attraction, I don't attract clients that way. So mm. um, my that's I important. have energetic boundaries. That's an, that's an important piece you mentioned. Like, uh, I wanted to bring that up because it was something that came up the other day on the the concept of like, if I think it was Marilyn Monroe, Monroe said, um, if you can't handle me at my worst, then you don't deserve me at my best, you know? And, and mm-hmm. I saw that. like, I like some of these kind of sayings and these quotes and things, but I, I like to reframe them in such a way that make more resonance with me. And, mm-hmm. and the re- the more resonant feel for me is that if, if I can't love you in such a way that, allows me to place you in my heart, then do I deserve to love you at all? You know, that's, that's my kind of reframe on it or mm-hmm. love myself enough to put us both in our hearts, you know, and mm-hmm. for me, that's, that's the reframe for me that what brings a, a level of self responsibility to that concept that, that she mentions. It's like, well, if you just want to recklessly be and be your worst all the time and expect me to still love you and put you in my heart, then yeah. you know, how, how can I actually do that? If, if it's, if it's, uh, if it's not a two way street, you know? Yeah, love them from a distance. That's what I do. I've done that with so many people. I've done that with my family as well, with people in my family. You love them from a distance. And um, 
just because I say you're not for me doesn't mean that I don't love you. It just means right now you're not for me and I'm not for you. So it's, um, I love you, blessings, but it's not working out right now. So that's, there's the boundaries right there, um, energetically, so to say, with that. And because um, nobody should ever accept toxicity in, in any form if you feel it's at a detriment to you. Mm. Um, so, so yeah, so it's like I, I've learned to love people. Um, and that's been the most challenging as well for me personally is, is loving people against all odds. Um, even if I never talk to them again, even if they did terrible shit to me or wish terrible shit on me, it's like I, Christ center, Christ consciousness, let me, how, how deep can I love them? In a kind of way. And talk to us on that because it's not easy for a lot of people. If people will be, mm. will, someone will do something terrible to them, they'll feel either vengeful or spiteful, or you know, I have to do something back, or even just accept them in your life. A lot of people just, oh, they're mm. friends, of course. You know, I don't care how they treat me, or it's like I'm, I love them, so I'm gonna let them in my life. I think that that is love too, is to go, no, I'm not gonna accept that in my field, in my life but I will love you from over here, like you said, and, and that's not an easy thing. So how do you actually do that? Yeah, for me, I, I, um, I always put it towards, um, I, don't, I don't know what, what's going on in somebody's life. Like, I don't, I don't know what's making them act this way or, or treat me this way or treat others this way. I don't assume anything. Um, I just assume though that something might, so there's something under that surface that, um, that I don't know about. So um, I'm not gonna go there and judge them and, 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 and take it personal which is really hard. It's, it's really hard. Like, um, it, I'm not going to lie, like shit's challenging. And I wish there was a way like, a, like you take a pill and you can fucking, <laughs> a lot of curse in my head. <laughs> you, you take a pill. It's, it's okay. <laughs> you take a pill and it's like, okay, it's over with and it's done. Um, it, here goes your, 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 your thick skin pill. There's nothing like that. It's, it's literally um, killing them with kindness and, and with love. And um, I just go around with, with um, this vision of, of, uh, of Christ consciousness of like, how deep can I love them on, on site that way? Cause I don't, I don't know what they're struggling with. Like, I don't know, I don't know what demon people are facing this and that. So whatever they blow out of me, I'm not going to take the personal. I'm not, I mean, now that now if somebody comes to my space, I want to be physically confrontational. I have to defend myself. I mean, you know what I'm saying? I'm from New York, New Jersey. Like I have, I have to defend myself, but I mean, it never gets to that point, but I'm saying like, it's, um, I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what your struggle is, but, but I'm here for you and I love you and um, I'm not going to take it personal. Mm. And that's, that's the love piece, right? So that's the love piece. Mm. And um, we could talk about that for a minute, but let's just go on to the integrity piece now. Yeah. Integrity, just, just, just living in your, your highest truth possible, your highest truth. And, um, and literally going back to, to when we were kids, we heard it all the time on uh, treat others how you want to be treated. Mm. And um, it's, it's as basic as that um, integrity. Uh, but well, that's another that's another one I like to reframe. Right? Like it's like treat others how you would like to be treated. I, I feel there's a bit of a flaw there. I feel it's like, well, I might like to, I, you know, I might like to be um, spanked or you know, I might like to be pissed on or you know, whatever it is, whatever my kink might be or whatever my thing might be. If I treat other people like that, they might not like it. So I reframe that to treat others how they would like to be treated because I feel that. If that that brings a conversational piece and it brings it together piece, like well, how would how do you mm. like to be treated? You know, and then it's like if I treat others how I like to be treated, it might not necessarily be <laughs> welcomed or appreciated. Whereas yeah. I'm like yeah. I treat other people like they like to be treated, it opens up a conversation. I actually have to get to know and understand this person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, remember when we were kids, they would they would say that all the time. It was like, um, Charlie, why why did you hit Steve? <laughs> You have to treat others how you want to be treated, and it's like, <laughs> it's like, okay, that's the ground. Like, but yeah, like I, I like that reframe for sure. Um, and that's that's what it's like, because it forces you to to get to know somebody. Um, but as far as integrity, it's like underlining just showing up for yourself and and being being that 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 structured, um, grounded person that you want to be mm. in that moment. Um, say for instance, if uh, if I'm driving along the street here and, and I side swipe a car um is integrity going to drive away is there integrity going to wait a little bit and maybe leave my my details on the person's windshield like sorry it was me here goes my name brendan brendan Durrell. here's my information you can call me we'll, we'll sort this out integrity does that integrity doesn't just drive away of, oh nobody saw me so i'm gonna go so it just goes it gets back to the basics and in terms of that like <clears throat> what does it look like because i know that that's a big piece for like it's just super damaging for your own self-esteem if you're doing things that you know inside of you feel wrong or feel like 
I, I don't, I'm yeah. not a big on right and wrong, like, you know, but there are things that feel like they're like, yeah, it's underlying things that you know, you're just totally out, you know, that something's not a truth, or you know, that something's yeah. you're not hiding a little bit of truth, or you know, that you've done something and haven't told, like, there's you're withholding something, or you've done something mm -hmm. against someone and they don't know about it. Like, that for me is a, it's really damaging for your own self esteem. It's less about yeah. you know, the other person and doing it for your own your own mental, emotional, spiritual well-being. Yeah, no, I agree 100%. Because um, integrity starts in here before outwardly. It's like, can you honestly, can you live with yourself if you drive away right now from this scene? Can you live with yourself, not live with their thought of you, but live in yourself? And that's what it comes down to. Like, yourself's going to let you stay there and, and leave your details in that car that you've done that to somebody. Because I personally couldn't go home and sleep knowing that I, I did that kind of shit and then I didn't. I didn't stand up and, and act accordingly in integrity. Mm. So yeah, definitely. It's definitely an inside job. And does that for you build a, yeah, does that build a sense in you of some sort of like, does that give you a sense of trust in yourself or a sense of, um, I guess it's integrity. Is it like, cause integrity is like the strength, right? And when I think of integrity, I think of like a building or a structure that's mm. solid and not going to go anywhere. So like, what what practices do you do to ensure that you're staying with your integrity so is it like if you do something um a transgression that you you deal with it immediately as possible or like what are some of the practices that you have to ensure that you're staying within your own integrity i go straight with feeling i drop in the feeling um my personal feeling and and, and i i honestly talk to my gut and i'm like does, does this feel right um coming from a love place that's how the the the, the, the trinity that i talk about correlates and stuff like because if it's coming from love am i gonna do this um am i gonna leave this scene or if i'm gonna am i just gonna dip out it's like it's i have to like feel it feel inside of it because um with my intuition and my knowing um i'm, I'm pretty confident in in that if it's the right way because would i honestly want somebody to decide to wipe my car and dip out mm -hmm. <laughs> like um and and me as well like it goes back to um one of my favorite players growing up um, baseball in America, his name was Derek Jeter yes. when I was growing up. And um, I remember he said, it was like this famous quote that he said. Um, he said he would practice at a stadium with nobody around, not one person in there. Dewey would always sprint off the field because he always said, you never know who's watching kind of deal. You never know who's watching. Like the time that you're walking, like you're setting an example every single time. And for me, energetically, like with the world, the collective, I'm setting an example every time. If I stay in integrity, when nobody's watching, that, that helps the healing of this world mm -hmm. in, in some form. And also for me, that sets the tone for things happening to me as well. Mm -hmm. Like if I'm going to be shady and sketchy and dip out on that, like I'm opening that up to my life in the same way. Mm -hmm. So that's a big piece, actually. The, <clears throat> the piece on, you know, greatness isn't when it's, it's what you, it's what you're doing when no one's watching, <clears throat> you know, <clears throat> and then mm -hmm. like, even just in my gung practice, I'm practicing often alone wherever I am. And mm -hmm. I know that, you know, nobody's there, but I have to be 100% diligent because how, how I do anything is how I do everything, right? So it's like if I, if I slack off in my own practice when I'm, when I'm here by myself, then I'm going to be turning up like that. I'm going to be leaky in those areas. So it's, it's a big piece. And in terms of that, like I imagine that would build like a high level of trust in yourself. And what about bringing that to others or like we thought also – the feminine like when, when you're because i know that's a big piece for the women in life they need to have a lot of safety a lot of trust and you know so bringing that in if you have that high level in yourself that that you know and, and women are highly intuitive humans are highly intuitive but especially women mm -hmm. and you know how do you feel that that translate in the in the masculine feminine kind of um interactions um with with both mask and feminine uh, feminine um with the integrity piece yeah <clears throat> Yeah, it's um for me it's um as you're talking as far as like partnership or just like in general just just yeah, with, with, with partnership and with even just like safety of like because I know women are walking around in a lot of the, in the heightened oh fear danger and you know like whether it's partnership or relationship um, even met men meeting women or women feeling safe in the presence of men this kind of stuff like I, I, ah yeah like I think that's a big piece like uh, if we have a trust in ourselves. Or if yes, we have I see what you're getting. Ourselves, yeah. then that's going to translate. If there's some level of I don't trust myself, or I don't have, I don't feel integrous with 
with other stuff. It's not, it might not even be with women. It might just be I cheated on the test or I, yeah. I, I might swipe the dude. It has nothing to do with anything, but you know there's transgressions within you. I feel that yeah. you're energetically picked up by, by the women in our life, especially, and, and you won't have the trust. Yeah. No, 100%. Yeah, you're right, man. That's, that's how I feel as well. It's, um, if, if that's not right in you, we're going to pick up on that. Uh, women definitely going to pick up on that. Um, man, to anybody, like, you, like when you walk in a room, like you sniff something like energetically, like, oh, what's that? <laughs> what's that? Like, you know, it has a scent to it. And yeah, you're right. Like there's, um, that's why for me, if, if, if I have to, if I stay in that integrity piece, I know that I'm helping other people feel comfortable around me as well because I feel comfortable with myself. Um, this guy I've, I, I, I was listening to speak recently, like he's really fiery guy. And he just said simply, he goes, I don't do well with the elephant in the room. <laughs> I kicked the elephant out. And, um, and I was like, yeah, like energetically, like if something ain't right, you're going to pick up on it. It's just going to be there. Mm -hmm. So yeah, with, with the feminine, with women feeling safe, um, men have to do that work. Men have to go, go in and, and feel safe with themselves first before it can translate because if, if you, if you're a man out here, but you feel like a scared little hurt little boy in here, women are going to feel that feminine is going to feel that we're going to be out of balance as well. And what's the, what's the kind of process for you or like, what have you found if there is that hurt little boy in there? Is it, what's the process of aligning the, you know, that with, with the man on the outside here? For me, um, I do a lot of visual visualizations with that. Um, like straight drop into it. Um, I, I go into a med my meditation practice and if I feel something arising, like the realization I had with my brother, um, the hurt that I was experiencing with that, I literally went into a meditation and I visualized, I, w I journeyed myself through it um, of the six-year-old boy who was reading the letter slowly, the seven-year-old boy reading the letter slowly from my brother. And I went back to that feeling of watching him read that letter and just straight up just hugging on him and loving on him mm -hmm. and getting into there. Um, this is not a one-step thing either. Like, it's not like a one-step cure. This is like over and over, like showering my, my younger self in my mind with that love that I wanted to receive in that moment. Mm -hmm. So I do visualization practices, um, deep visualization practices of even to a point where I feel the emotions of that little boy in my meditation. And I, and I start crying. I start tearing because it's like, it's the hate. I mean, not the hate, the, the hurt and the agony inside of me. It's, it's, it's in there. Um, and I let it come out. So going in deep, meditation packs is a visualization. And what does that look like in terms of, is it a two minute thing? Is it a 20 minute thing? I know it might change, but like, and also what do you feel from before the practice to doing the practice and then what happens as a result? Yeah, it could be, it could be um, a deep, it could be like a five minute thing. It could be a 10 minute thing. It could be an hour thing, or it could be just, I'm driving somewhere and I want to, I want to love on, love on my inner child, love on myself. Um, before it, it's like, I, I feel like, like, why, why do I feel this way? Like, why is this insecurity coming up? Why am I, why do I feel jealous that, that this guy I want to be boys with is, is spending time with this boy or, or my, my other homie? Like he's, you know, like, um, just little stuff that's not relevant. Just like human, human, human shit that shouldn't even matter. So I'm like, why is this shit coming up? So I go in and it's like, it goes back. It always points back for me to the little boy who, who wanted to be good enough for somebody. Mm. Mm -hmm. But afterwards, when when I when I address that and deal with it, it's like, huh, okay, um, I'm 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 whole now. I'm completely whole. I'm, I'm in myself. Yeah, beautiful. So it's like having the not necessarily looking out there. I, I can't remember who I was talking to about this, but it was like everything. Ah, I think it was one of my students actually. It was um, one of my students who's doing a hundred day challenge at the moment with the qigong, and uh, and constantly. Um, they were telling me that they were almost playing these mental games while they were doing the gong. Like, oh, this came up, you know, in the shoulder and it means this. And then, then they would run the story. I said, look, just come back to the center. Don't worry about the story. Yeah. And looking out there, just, just come into the feeling, come into the center and, and the, the gong will take care of itself. Like we have all the answers mm. within ourselves. We don't need to put this kind of what it means and put the meaning on it. It's just like, if we come back to the center or, or everything we need is within us. Or if they're asking me questions about what does this mean? And can, can I research this out there and find books and, and knowledge on it? I'm like, that's great, but the, it's not going to teach you anything compared to the practice. Yeah. You know, all the answers that we, that we need are actually within the body. So I, I feel, I feel that that's a, that's a big piece right there. 
Yeah, a huge piece, and I, I, that's why I admire that you do qi, um, qigong because it's like um, it's 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 like how you just that that flow that you speak about the flow, and 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 the flow is like all leading to here and out, coming in. It's like to me, it's like a wheel, you know, it's going in there, and it's it's constantly in here. Um, so yeah, going back to center and, and and embodying that and feeling that I can see that just uh, that's where all the answers lie and and the feelings. And like I said, like there's some times where I just don't know. I just feel irritated and I feel triggered. And I don't know what the hell it is. I can't explain it. But I go in and I'm like, what what do I want? Kind of deal. Like what am I looking for? Yeah. What am I lacking right now? What do I feel that I'm lacking? So I ask myself these these um these questions and and. And I see what comes up in, in feeling, not words. Like a lot of people, our culture searches for words mm. and stuff. I, I, I go by feeling because that, that's ultimately I want to feel peace. I don't, I don't want to see peace like, because I know if I feel it, I'm going to see it anyway. So I want to I feel it first. That was actually something that um, Deontay Wilder said the other day after his fight with uh, Ortiz. He said, um, what, what, we, what we can speak, what we speak and believe we can achieve. And I, th- I thought that was great. It's like what we are able to articulate and in terms of, and I, I didn't take that as like, you know, a lot of people want to see words. I took that as what we're able to articulate and identify. So what we're able to reveal and feel within ourselves, then we can then, you know, you add belief to that, anything is possible. So it's just like yeah. the articulation of like, actually, what is this feeling? You know, what is it? You know, what is this vision? What is this? message that i want to that i want to put out there what is this um you know the the sensation i'm feeling and then actually being able to connect with it i think is super powerful oh yeah definitely like the in- inquiry is, is freaking huge man like inquiry going in like um a lot sometimes i start my meditations with asking a verbal question out loud mm. like i ask it maybe as i'm breathing i'll take a deep breath ask that verbal question take a deep breath ask the question and then when i when i nestle in after about 10 deep breaths in the question my mind's fixated on that question. So I, I kind of like, I'm, I'm diving in with that question going down like that and see what comes up. Yeah, super powerful. Super powerful. So that's the, that's the integrity piece and the compassion piece. That, talk to us about that. Ooh, compassion, like straight up Jesus of Nazareth kind of compassion. <laughs> no, but it's... it's, it's um, Throwing the rocks at me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm catching that shit like a baseball too. Throw them at me, bro. It's fashion. Um, yeah, compassion, man, just underlining, just, um, having an understanding where you don't need to understand about people's journeys. Like, like we just, like I said, we don't know, um, you never know about somebody. So, um, not that I'm thinking the worst about somebody, <clears throat> but I understand what they're going through because I'm human and, and I have feelings too. And yeah, we might not be experiencing the same thing, but there's an understanding because we're, we're human and, and, and emotions still play a big part. Um, so <clears throat> having compassion for people. And um, and loving on them is, is a big thing for me. And uh, genuine, like not. And a, a lot of people, um, when you see a lot of today on social media, a lot of people they um, <clears throat> they might take a a camcorder or whatever, a phone, and go go give like a homeless person twenty dollars or something like that. But recording it and doing it and saying that's compassion. Like I, I like that, but it's like, or is that really a heart centered act of compassion? Like do, do you have to put it out there in that way? Okay, so um, it, it's underlying. I feel like it, you know, someone like a Drake who did, who recently gave away all the money with the film clip. Like, I, I feel that that's a great thing because putting that on blast, you know, if you've got a following and got an audience, that's a great thing because if that triggers you, but I, I think adding the message there, like you don't have to record this, you know what I mean? This is mm. just because it's, I'm not looking for the, for the props from it. I'm doing this from a place of love. And if it inspires you to go do it, go and do it, but don't feel the need you have to record it. Right. Yeah, it's tough too, cause like, cause what if you don't have twenty dollars to give somebody? What if you don't have all that money to give somebody? So, are, is that gonna make you feel less or less than because you don't have that? Um, it's uh, it's compassion. Like to me, like I know people who have. I, I've I've met a homeless man who had nothing, and he goes and 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 volunteers at the soup kitchen that he doesn't even eat at. And I'm like, why do you do that? He goes because I understand where they're coming from. And I was like, wow, it was in Hawaii. It was it was it was in Honolulu. Yeah. And I was like, wow, man, like that that changed me. So it's um it's, it's just coming from a place of understanding. If even if you don't understand, we don't have to understand to understand somebody. Mm. And talk to us about that understanding, because some people get hung up. They're like, I overstand, or like, how do how do you put your under and over? And yeah, like, because I'm a big believer in that. Like, I seek to understand first. That's why I'm always asking a lot of questions. Mm-hmm. I want to know what it's like to be somebody else. I want to put myself in their shoes. 
I want to know what their experience is like so that I can get a feeling and empathy for them. And that's another yeah. thing about with men. It's not very, it's not very, uh, it's not promoted that, that empathy is a, is a piece that we should worry about or that we should concern ourselves with. Yeah. With, with my clients, I immediately, like before I meet them, <clears throat> I ask them what they're experiencing, like, like emotions and feelings before I even get their backstory, anything, what they want it, because the, I can't, I might not be able to associate what, what they're experiencing currently, but if they say I'm sad, I'm angry, I'm happy, or I'm, I'm, I, have, I feel anxiety, I've, I've personally, like most people, we felt all of those things at some point. So immediately I, I drop into the emotion and then that's my understanding. Okay, they, they, feel, they feel anxious right now. So I, I, I know what anxious feels like. So I'm gonna come at them with a place of that kind of understanding of they're in an anxious space right now, they might be vulnerable, but that's my angle right now to, to support them in the best way possible. Mm. And that can happen on not just with clients, right? You can, what does that look like in every day with, with you? Especially like the friends, the family, the, pe the close people who really can push the buttons. Like how do you practice it in the times of heightened, you know, fight, flight kind of, <laughs> kind of deal? Yeah, kill them with kindness. <laughs> but uh, my, uh, like say like my family, um, like what I'm doing now is so opposite and so, out of out of like the family karmic circle you know like how i'm living my life and um and but my parents they love me to death and, and nothing's going to change that so i feed off that as well i'm like there's literally nothing that i can do that's going to make them stop loving me in that way and they make that and they let that be known to me i'm so blessed to have beautiful parents who who say that speak that out loud um so for me it's like if, if it's a family member or a close friend like um I understand. Like I, I just I put my I put love first, um, and that and love first, and then compassion, and then depending on the situation, it's like okay, like they are doing the best that they can from that level of consciousness, mm -hmm. and um and and it's not for me to be like you need to level up to 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 love to, to be with me in that way. Mm -hmm. So I just I give them, I give them space to be them because I want them to give me space to be me. Yeah, nice. And what where does the piece in in all of this we've got. I guess integrity is kind of within self as a, like by definition. Um, yeah. You know, and, and love is, you know, it's a shared experience. You can't, it's like love on yourself and then you can, that will spill over into the world, into mm -hmm. loving the world, the nature, everyone out in it. Um, and then the compassion as well, being compassionate and understanding of others. But where does that, because mm -hmm. I know a lot of people are hard on themselves and they're running these things of, uh, I'm, you know, nothing I do is good enough. Perfectionism, all of these kinds of pieces. <laughs> Like, where does the self-compassion piece come in and how can one practice that? Yeah, most, I mean, most of us, like, it's, well, we, we do it to ourselves. Like, we just put these super hard, big expectations on ourselves. And, and, most, of the, and most of the judgment comes, it comes from us. And um, at the end of the day, like you mentioned earlier, like, I don't, I don't believe in right and wrong in any way. Mm -hmm. and, and for me, when I think about that personally, um, it's like, okay, I, I can't do wrong. So, so if anything, I'm just going to keep doing right. And if and if that right wasn't the right that I was looking for, it's still right and to the fact that I'm learning from that. In that way, like there's no perfection. Like perfection is not is not real. Well, it, it's a worthy ideal to work towards. Like you know, can create. Like you look at like these Olympic, you know, gymnasts or whatever. There's the perfect mm -hmm. and or, you know, like you know, there's the perfect. Like you know, no one's gonna bat at 100. You know, <laughs> like yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. Mm -hmm. And if you are, there's, there's some robotics going on or something. You know, like, yeah, you, you can work towards it, but uh, you know what you're what you're describing for me sounds like the concept of we are the winner, we learn. You know, and and mm -hmm. that, that there has been so helpful for me in terms of not beating myself up, not being hard on myself, not not yeah. not uh, like having a compassion, a level of of love for myself, putting myself in my heart, as as I like to say. Yeah. Yeah, brother, like nobody's a professional human, like nobody. And even when somebody says that they, they've lived through this, like there's, everybody's an amateur. Everybody's an amateur. The day that somebody doesn't die and I'm and like they're in mortality and they're just going and going, I'm like, all right, that motherfucker is a professional. You know, like they, they're doing something right. <laughs> At the end of the day, we all die. So nobody's a professional. Nobody has, has one life in that way yet. So that, that's, that's what I put it up against. <clears throat> no doubt. And are there some mentors in in your life are there some people like i don't know books you've read any kind of like mm -hmm. i'm gonna look i've said that you know all the knowledge comes from within and there's gonna be some epiphanies there's gonna be some aha moments for you that you've had 
Um, but oftentimes they're triggered by the outside, the mentor, the book, the, the course you did, so on and so forth. Uh, can you talk to us a little bit about that? Is any of those experiences? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, there was um, like mentors, like that was, um, there was a book that I read when I was living in Perth. Um, it was called I Am Word by Paul Selig. And um, it's, it's, a, it's a channel transmission type book. Excuse me? Well, uh, say, the name, say the title and the author again. It's called uh, I Am Word by Paul Selig. And um, he's had three books. And um, that's the first one in the series. And I was reading that. And um, his work um, inspired me um, in that way. So it became like the book became a mentor. I mean, he was the channel of the book, but the book became the mentor for me, like the actual work. And um, it helped me with the tools that we speak about, like in vis visualizing your perfect self, feeling that into it. Um, so that got me started with like material and like, and seeing that, but actual mentors, um, I haven't had many, man, to be honest with you. Like I I've been living from within, like if I'm like you, I want to understand. So if something comes up, like I, I say, Google has been my mentor, my number one mentor over the last YouTube. couple of years. Like Google has been, yeah, <laughs> YouTube, Google, like they, they're, they're my go-to. It's like, I'll go to them. But in a human sense, um, Preston, Preston Smiles has, he's, he's been like that big brother type figure. He's pushed me to limits and, um, and he's, he shot me with love, tough love and different things. So can you tell us definitely somebody else. Can, can you tell us a few stories around that? Like what, what particular tough love have you received and what was happening at those times and what, what did you take from those kind of experiences? Um, there's times in my life where <clears throat> I like nothing, have nothing like financially just feeling feeling empty, feeling less of a man based on culture standards, like not having a dime to my name. And then um, I'll, I'll send him a message and I'll be like, yo, I'm experiencing this, this, and this. And then um, from what I needed in that moment, I didn't need somebody to be like, oh man, it's going to get better. It's going to do this. Like he, he, he has this ability to read you where you're, meet you where you are in that, in that, in that instance. So it's like, all right, I want you to do this. You go outside, you, you go scream your lungs, or go get a, give a primal scream, you go do this. Um, you feel into it. what what is it teaching you so he's been that person who has like bounced these questions off of me <clears throat> to get me out of my victimhood just to bring me back to to center in that way mm -hmm. with a, from a big brother stand on point of view so um he's been one there's, there's another man um named garth sam he runs this organization called the universal brotherhood um he's a cool cat he's from he's he's half african half um, Ghanaian, and half canadian and uh He's about 55, 53 years old. <clears throat> and he's just, um, he's very deep in like Qigong and, and martial arts. And he's very Zen, very he's Zen, very like, five, right? <laughs> yeah, he looks young, man. He looks young. And, and I, I firmly believe it's the martial arts, the Qigong and the, the energetic work that he's doing that he's been doing for years. Um, dude, like flawless skin and everything, chiseled body. I'm like, yo, this is your prototype for sure. You're not a real guy. Um, but yeah, him, him as well, like just, um, He's very, very rooted in integrity and um, and men showing up for themselves and showing up for other men. So these two guys have been great, and I've been blessed too with um just beautiful um beautiful women that I've crossed paths with. Um, the feminine has been a big support for me up until this point. Mm. Um, past partners, um, um, past women who just been like tarot readers or any anything of that sort of that nature, the energetic, just feeding me on love. And um, so I've had. I've had countless, countless, countless mentors, countless, and um, even people who've taught me things in one day, in one conversation. So everybody's kind of like, has been my teacher mentor. Nice, and, and you did uh, mention like, I can't re remember the place, it's a, I think it's a volcano in Maui. Oh, yeah, it's called. <clears throat> mentioned some, some, uh, some quite profound teachings that you received from the land. Can you talk to us about that? Ooh, yeah, there's um, on Maui, there's a volcano called Haleakala, um, House of the Sun, and um, <clears throat> Hale meaning home and Akala is sun. And it's, uh, it's just you go up there and it's, it's, it's so loud that it's quiet. Um, and all you hear is like this, this frequency going through your ear. And it broke me down. Like I, I, I get emotional every time I go up there. And um, just being in those lands, just being in that presence, like you realize how small we really are and um how small i am and it's like wow like i'm stressing over this this financial shit and like look at this look at this and it's it's just receiving and breathing it's, it, it teaches you it teaches you how simple life really is and how consistent how consistent nature is and how consistent the earth is and if we can just mold our lives based on simplicity and consistency like everything changes mm -hmm. 
Yeah, beautiful. And of those, of those, uh, those mentors, is there any pieces that have stuck with you? Like it, that have been life changing pieces, like that have just dropped in or things they've said or principles that they live by that they've shared. I'm underlining what's, what's a common theme from all of them that I just put into my own, my own like language is that, um, I got the juice. Like, I, I, I have already arrived to who I want to be. I just have to, I have to be that. Like, I have to embody that. And, and that's, that's the underlying thing and in my journey was I was seeking, 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 seeking. And it's like, yeah, and it's like the alchemist. Like, you seek, you seek, and then it brings you right back to here, right back to yourself, to where you were, where you started. And um, so everybody has, has played a, a beautiful role in being a mirror and, and, and showing me to myself, ultimately. Yeah, cool. And so it's just like owning that juice, right? It's like re realizing I got the power, I got the juice, I got whatever it is I need. Yeah. It's a matter of just like that belief piece, like, well, actually, I do have it and I'm, I'm worthy of, of owning it. Yeah, bro. Like, we don't have to buy juice. Like, we just drink our own, man, and we can share with other people as well. It's fine. It's from a, it's from a ever flowing, ever flowing source that's not going to give out as long as we believe it's not going to run out. Are there some kind of practices that you do? Are there daily practices? Are there things that put you in flow? Like, I know, like living life in the flow zone, this is something that I'm passionate about. I'm, I'm really excited about. I'm inspired by, like, and I'm always curious, are there, are there pieces that, you know, flow hacks that you love to implement? Like, for me, it's like, drink two liters of water every day. It's, it's, it's set my intention in the morning. Yeah. It's, you know, <laughs> yeah, it's like, there's little things that I do that I'm always coming back to, focus formula, these types of things. So I'm always curious of, for other people, what, what, are, what are some things that, that put you into flow and, and just, yeah, really get you in that, owning that juice. Yeah, and you talk about flow, so you know what's, what's, uh, what I love about that as well? <clears throat> like, you speak about flow, but it's like, flow also re requires some kind of structure. And, um, and some structure is good, and that's the masculine point of it, you know, like the masculine <laughs> element. So it's like, yeah, yeah, it's like, I, there's times in my life where I just want to flow and it's like, I've done that and I, I feel like shit because it's like, what am I? I'm not consistent, you know? And for me, it's like the, the just speaking purely on energetic um, basis, it's like the feminine wants to flow, you know, the feminine wants to flow and the masculine wants to be type A and get shit done. So it's like having that balance there, it's like um, you do Qigong, that's going to put you in your flow. And it's, it's a structure because you want to do that. You generally enjoy to do it and it's going to help you trigger trigger your flow and I'm the same way like working out is a big part of my life um if I can't make it to a gym or something like I'm, I'm down doing push-ups I'm down doing bodyweight squats it just was a part of me um I thought that I had to try to be a yogini and, and, and all that kind of shit when I was when I was going through my awakening I was like yo I'm a big dude man I'm, I'm, I'm 6'2 245 like some of these poses I don't know if I can get into them <laughs> so um it's just being who I who I was and um so working out is, is one big thing um uh, Breath work, that's another big thing for me as well, changing my state. Um, <clears throat> simple as that, like alternating nose, breath, nostril breathing, that, those kind of things. Um, visualization, that, that, that's one of my main things is, is visualizing, like seeing it inside my mind. Um, even if it's not like a structured practice, even if it's before bed, before I fall asleep, I'm, I'm envisioning something and then I fall asleep. Mm -hmm. but, but visual, definitely. And, um, but physically, like water, that's, that's, I try to drink two of these these hogs a day, man, minimum, to, to minimum, and um, eat, eat as clean as possible, you know, and get sunlight. Sunlight's a big thing for me as well. Um, like, I, I have to flow if, with, with sun in my face at some point. Sun in the skin? Like, sun in, sun in particular? Like, do you have, like, the top lift? Do you breathe it in the eyes? Do you have, like, I know, I know sun in the skin. there's some flow, flow hacks. We get sun on the scrotum or sun on the anus is, like, super powerful as well. Yeah. Yeah, I um, I mean, in uh, in Australia, in Perth, when I was riding the sound, I did a little, um, I did the scrotum, the scrotum, uh, uh, sun healing, and I was that was pretty powerful, man. Like it was, I was drained, like I was dreaming in the best possible way. It was like like a recharge, but um, just having simple sun on my skin is like that. That just does something to me. Like even if it's cold outside, and like I feel it through the window, just going like that, it energizes me. Um, it triggers me. Um, well, fine, writing man. music. Fine like nature as well like I, I see the little kid kitten or the cat or the dog always finds the piece of sun and just sits in it and just like this bees there with the yeah. sun I'm like I pick up things from nature like that too yeah that's interesting right like when you think we see animals their behavior how simple they are like why do they go and lay in the sun or the cat like it's it's pretty cool that they do that like they're on to something they, they know that there's significance and value in that 
mm. and that's kind of how I feel as well. It's like I, I need I need to feel that on my skin. Mm. And in terms of like when, uh, have you ever worked with people who are like you know they're <clears throat> quite uh, whether it's like drug addicted or they you know they are escaping things and running away from the problems and really having a hard time to get their shit together. What what um what are some kind of I guess hacks or kind of you know to instant break out of that i know some of the things you mentioned but it's hard to to remember to drink water or hard to remember to do the breathing when you're in it you know so what, what can you recommend here i i associate say it's like um i associate things with feelings so um if, if i don't drink two of these a day um i'm not going to feel what i feel is my best feeling um so say if like you're a person who sleeps six hours a day if you, if you get if you get only three and a half you're not going to feel how you how you want to feel so <clears throat> if i work with somebody um I'm like, how do you, how do you want to feel? I ask them, how do you want to feel? Like, what's, what's your, what's your best state that you can possibly be in? Okay. I, you need to get seven hours. Okay. You feel good after that. You need to drink this much water to get to that. So, um, I, I do inquiry on them and see like where their optimal state is. Mm -hmm. And then um, I, I base it on that. Um, so if they're feeling less than that, if they're feeling like shit one day, um, I'm like, did you get enough sleep? Yeah. Did you drink enough water? No. Um, there's usually, it's usually one of those kind of things, like they didn't do something or something came up. Mm. Um, so I, I kind of gauge it based on that. Cool. Cool, cool. Bananas. And what do you got coming up? I know we're going to wrap up soon. Um, I, I got to get out of here pretty soon as well. I got another thing happening soon. So it's been a pleasure, been an honor. Yeah. Yeah, man. Just some um, beautiful, beautifulness all around. Um, yeah. Just integrating with lands and, um, I got a beautiful brotherhood sweat lodge I'm attending tomorrow and, and I keep going in deeper into the, the earth work and just um, loving, loving the energetic work and shamanism and just, just living magic, man. That's, that's what it's about. Just being happy and peaceful and, and honoring. Now you're going to go open up those threads on you. <laughs> Talk to us about that. <laughs> Talk to us about Sean. Talk to us about the magic. Just give we us can say that for episode 260. <laughs> 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 No doubt, no doubt. So, um, where, where can people find you? How can we, how can we continue the conversation? Um, social media, um, Instagram, um, at Brendan Durrell, B R E N D E N D U R E L L. <clears throat> That's my website as well, BrendanDurrell.com, and then Facebook, Brendan Durrell as well. Um, hit me up. I'm, I'm here. It's a community. It's all love. Like Z said, it's, it's all about flowing, and, um, and that's what we're here for. We help, we're here to help everybody with, with that flow, you know, to be in that. Beautiful. And just before we go, um, thank you first and foremost. Thank you for your time and creating the space and being live here with us. And yeah, it just it just moves me to be able to connect with, <laughs> with brothers and sisters, with with people all over the world who are who are living what they love. And you know, it's just it moves me. So thank you so much. And if you had like one tweet. Like you were about to die, you knew you were going to die, and you had one tweet to leave leave the world. What what would be the the message you'd like to to share? Own your fingerprint. Own your fingerprint. Yeah, own your fingerprint. That's that's so that's so deep. It's like oh, <laughs> it's like <laughs> <laughs> it's own it. Yeah, it's, uh, own your fingerprint. It's Ooh, what is that? that. Yeah, it's dope. <laughs> nobody else, nobody else got it. You gotta you gotta own it because nobody else will or can. Yeah. So it's all in you. <clears throat> but yeah, brother, I appreciate you too for this uh, this container that you have in here and um and your inspiration and, and also your backstory and I know where you where you come from and, and what you've been through and like and I just I honestly like I, I honor you for, for being in this space right now. Um you so easily could have been in other places right now, man, down other routes and, and, and in in dark places, but but you're here now and, and inspiring and that, that inspires me as well. So I appreciate you for being that brother for brothers and for everybody else. Yeah, man. It's, uh, you know, our, our voids become our values, right? Definitely. Definitely, man. No doubt. So thank you again. And we will do it again. I'm looking forward to continuing the conversation and maybe ha having the shoe on the other foot if, if you're ever doing similar stuff. So yeah, bro. And so it is. Let it, let it be. So until next time, people, thanks for tuning in and, Till then, keep the flow growing and the growth flowing. Bam. Thanks, man. Oh, fam. <laughs> <laughs>